Anurajim. I seek refuge with Allah against the accursed devil. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنَ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّ لِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is better in speech than one who invites to God and acts righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims. Yeah, salam, salis, naganka, salam, baba, sidu. Salam, baba, mu, musa, awadi. Naganka. Ya Hazi sabili adi ulala Ala basiratin ana wabani tabani Wa subana Allahi wa maana minal mushirikin This is my way I invite to Allah by perception I and whoever follows me And glory be to Allah For I am not among the mushriks That is idolaters Alhaqqu min rabbikum Faman shaa fali yumin Wa man shaa fali yafur The truth is from your Lord So whoever wills let him believe And whoever wills let him disbelieve يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين او يو هو بيليف بيوير اوف جاد اند بي ويز ذوز هو ار تروثفول ذات از هو ار هونست ناو سو اور توبيك توداي هاز تو دو ويز ذا تروث ان اسلام او وي كان سي ذا ترو ذا ريليجن اوف تروث او وي كان سي ريليجن اوف ذا تروث دين الحق سو وي ار جوينغ تو ديل ويز حق ذات از ذا تروث So first of all when we say haq haq is it means the truth literally it means the truth or truth al haq or haq if you say haq is indefinite when we say al haq it becomes definite hmm? so when it is a definite uh, now al haq it becomes definite which means one truth and the truth when we say haq that is the truth uh, that is truth that is indefinite right so When we are dealing with the truth first of all we have to understand what is the meaning of haq and when we say haq it is a fact that has been verified any fact which has been verified is classified as the haq the truth or we can say uh, conformity to reality or actuality something which conforms to reality or actuality it becomes the truth reality Right. Salam brother Alam Shah. Uh brother Mood Hussein Muhammad Ali, you're welcome. Salam alaik. Uh brother Mazir Rock Silva, I see you. Salam. Uh thank you all. Uh, Rebecca and Rena, all of you I've seen you all. Salam alaik. And the third meaning is a known statement that can be confirmed. Right? A known statement that can be confirmed. For instance, if somebody comes out and say brother Shrib has two kids, The person is just saying it because he knows it. So he says brother Shaib has two kids. So if you get to confirm it that becomes the truth. If you confirm that what the person said is the truth, then it becomes the truth, right? So first meaning is a fact that has been that has been verified. That is haq, that is truth. Or conformity to reality or actuality. You conform to the reality, that is haq. A known statement that can be confirmed or verified is also tagged as what the truth or truth. So now, many a times, salam bra said in Aganka. Yeah, you're welcome, bra. Inshallah. Many a times, you hear the sectarian Muslims telling you that the heaven and earth, the heavens and the earth were created because of one entity, one person, which is Muhammad alayhi salam, which is a lie. The heaven and the earth were not created because of Muhammad. There is no one single verse in the Quran which says that. Right? And secondly, people usually don't know why the heavens and the earth were created. So that is one of the reasons why today we are here to 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 justify that means to see why the heavens and the earth were created. so that we can get to understand the notion behind all this so but before i go on to give you the proofs as to why we are here for the truth because that is the reason why the heavens and the earth were created nothing it wasn't created because of anything just for the truth and i'll give you the verses to that right 
Uh -huh. So for people who don't know, many people will be guessing, you say, oh, uh, the, the heaven and the earth were created because of Muhammad. The heaven and the earth were created so that, uh, uh, because God loves Muhammad, the heaven and earth were created. They keep, you know, using their own hawa, their assumptions, their inclinations to, to, to lie to themselves. And that is out of coverage area. So we are going to ask God. So God, why did you create the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them? Why did you do that? We want to know, God, help us, please help us. Because Quran chapter 25 verse 33 clearly tells us, Right? وَلَا يَعْتُونَكَ بِمَثَلٍ إِلَّا جِنَاكَ بِالْحَقِّ وَأَحْسَنَ تَفْسِيرًا And I'll be coming to that. That is Quran chapter 25 verse 33. Quran chapter 25 verse 33. So God says, And they do not, and they will not come to you with an argument, a case, an instance, an example, anything. Let them bring any argument, any case, any instance, any method. Then God says, Illa jinaka bil haq wa ahsana tafsira. Hmm? Except we bring you the truth. Huh? And best in what? Tafsir. So the word tafsir comes from the root word fasara. When we say fasara, it means to, to explain something, to elucidate, to comment on something, to give a, a, this, a, a, a detailed account on something. So that is. Uh, uh, Tafsir, right? So many a times you hear the scholars saying, whose tafsir are you following? Who, whose tafsir of the Quran are you following? The Quran on its own is Ahsan al-Tafsir. It is best in explanation. It is best in commentary. You, are, you understand? It's just like when you are watching football. If you like, try it for people who watch football. Just watch football without the sound, without a commentator commenting. It's boring. You, you get the point. So what happens is, whenever you read a story from the Quran, it is God who gives you the explanation, the commentary. He has brought you the commentary. So that's why he says, فَإِذَا كَرَعْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعُ قُرْآنَ Then he says, ثُمَّ إِنَّا عَلَيْنَا بَيَانَهُ You understand? When you are, read, we are following the reading of the Quran, it is God who is going to give you the clarification, the explanation, the elucidation, the detailing account, everything. It is God who is going to explain. Right? So sometimes some people will tell you, oh, always you have to deal with the context of the Quran. It's impossible. Not always. You cannot always deal with the context. But when, this, when the discourse is, is a broad discourse, that one you need to join it together to get the context. You understand? So that, why did I say that? For instance, if you go to Surah, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Surah Al-Kawthar, he says, Inna atina ka al-Kawthar, fathalli rabbika wal-har, inna shaniya ka huwa al-abthar. Right? It's just a um, compass of uh, uh, three verses. Now, when you are dealing with this uh, verse, of course, you read it, you can see clearly God is saying something. But when we say put it into context, what, what are you trying to get at? What are you trying to hint? So this is why the Quran you cannot believe in part of the book leaving part so you have to join the Quran on its entirety in order to get the commentary the explanation in full you understand for instance if you go to Quran chapter 87 at the last verses uh, the last verses of chapter 87 he says <clears throat> he says inna fi sufil ula then he says, "Inna uh, haza fi sufi ula sufi Ibrahim wa Musa." Some people will say, since God says it is in the previous pages, the pages of Abraham and Moses, they think he's talking about the previous book. Chapter ninety-eight, verse two to verse three, he says, "Rasulu min Allah yatlu suhufan suhufan mutahara." These pages you are reading, they are suhuf suhufan mutahara. Fiha kutubun kajima. You see the kutub, the writings, kayyima, they are valuable. So when God says, suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa, when you take the Quran, the smaller chapters, 
the smaller chapters, usually, usually, they don't carry all the details into context unless you come to the bigger chapters from chapter 2 downwards. Uh, the bigger chapters, it gives you full account and details of issues. While the small chapters has, has like limited the details of certain issues. So usually small chapters will be telling you about the day of judgment. Whilst the bigger chapters have already explained everything into detail, giving you the tafsir of everything. Right? So in here, when you take the Quran, when it says Sufi Ibrahim wa Musa, meaning you have to go to the bigger pages. We have the chapter of Ibrahim, chapter 14, Surah Al Ibrahim. We have Surah Al Taha, which talk, which actually mostly talk about Musa alayhi salam. We have Surah Al Naml, which talks about Musa again. We have other chapters. We talk about Musa alayhi salam. We have Surah Al Bakara, which talks about Musa. So when God says Inna Haza fi Sufi Ula. Sufi Ibrahim wa Musa doesn't mean in the previous books. It means when you are reading the chapter 87 of the Quran, it is a small chapter. It doesn't give you big details of the, the whole issue. So it tells you the issue you are reading, it is in the previous pages of this book. So I'm reading the last pages here. Then it tells me, Inna haza lafi Sufi ula. Huh? Sufi Ula. When we say Ula, it means previous. So you have read pages of the book and it has previous pages. So it says Sufi Ula, then it says Sufi Ibrahim wa Musa. In the pages of Ibrahim and Musa, wherever you see the stories of Ibrahim or Musa, it tells you exactly the same thing which has been mentioned in chapter 87. I hope you are following my point. Because the Quran is to serve as tibiyana likulli shayin. Wa nazzalna alayka li kitaba tibiyana likulli shayin. Eh, salam. DMS. Yusuf, smile. Naga ka. Wa nazzalna alayka li kitaba tibiyana likulli shayin. Wa hudan wa rahmatan wa bushira li li muslimin. For the Muslims, the book is a clarification for all things. That is the answer here. So now let's move on. So we want to know why God created the heavens and the earth. Why was the heavens? Uh, why were the heavens and the earth created? Some people will say it is created. It was created because of Muhammad. There is no one single verse in the Quran which says that it's a lie. The heavens and the earth were not created because of Prophet Muhammad No, we are going to see the answer. Quran chapter forty six verse three. Let's see clearly what God says. Why were the heavens and the earth created? So God says. مَا خَلَقْنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا Right? وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَمَّا أُنْزِرُوا مُؤْرِذُونَ So, what is God telling us concerning the heavens and the earth? God says, we did not create the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them both. That is, بَيْنَهُمَا between the heavens and the earth. Two things, right? Heaven and earth. So the heavens have seven layers and the earth also have seven layers down. So the heavens and the earth. Except Bilhaq for the truth with the truth in truth. But in this context, it is for the truth with truth. Right? So God created the heavens and the earth except with the truth or for the truth now then he says and a fixed term he gave a fixed term for it why he created that then he says but those who disbelieve are turning away from what they are warned or what they are being warned they are turning away because they disbelieve in that that god created the heavens and the earth for the truth so they turn away they don't like it and similarly, God has repeated this statement in chapter 44, verse 38 to 39. Surah uh, Dukhan, chapter 44, verse 38 to verse 39. Yeah. Chapter 44, verse 38 to verse 39. 
and it clearly says, And we did not create the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them to play or for playing. That is not what God created the heavens and the earth for entertainment. Yeah? Where it says, La ibi, yeah? to be playing so that they will be playing. No, that is not why God created the heavens and the earth. So that you go for your entertainment, you go and watch your World Cup, your UEFA Champions League, your basketball, your Super Bowl, your whatever, whatever entertainment. No, it wasn't for playing. So God says, We only created them both. Halakanahuma. Huh? Khalaknahuma, that is heavens and the earth, we created them both hmm, for the truth. Illa bil haq. So he's telling you he created the heavens and the earth with the truth or for the truth. Then he says, but most of them do not know. That is, most of the people on earth, they don't know that. They don't know why the heavens and the earth were created. They think we are just created here by chance. Like atheists will tell you the world came out of nothing. It was just there. They are just there. Seriously. It's just like me telling you a, a, a vehicle was created just for nothing. It is just there. Why was the vehicle created, the aeroplane created? Nothing. It was just created to just exist. That's it. Why was the mobile phone created? Oh, it's just there. It was created nothing, no, no reason. It was just created for nothing, came out, out of nothing. I'm just telling you the mentality of an atheist, right? Good. So we can see based on the Quran, the reason why God created the heavens and the earth is for the truth with the truth. That is why he created the heavens and the earth. And this is why God himself is Al-Haq, the truth. So he created the heavens and the earth for the truth. Now with the truth. You understand? So let's go. So now where are we going to get the truth from? Where can we locate the truth? And where can we get the truth? Right? If you go to Quran chapter 39 verse 41. In Surah to Zumar. God says. Inna anzanna alayka al kitaba. Inna anzanna alayka al kitaba. Linnas bil haq. Then he says. Faman ittada fali nafsi. وَمَنْ دَلَّا فَإِنَّمَا يَدِلُّ عَلَيْهَا وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِوَكِيلٍ Do you see what God says? وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِوَكِيلٍ Yeah, so the verse says, Indeed, we have revealed the book to you for mankind in truth with the truth for the truth. Then it says, So whoever is guided, then it is for his soul, nafsihi. And whoever goes astray, then he only strays against it, it, alayha. Because the nafs, God always use a feminine attribute uh, for the nafs. That is a feminine uh, uh, pronoun, damir. The, the, the damir God uses for the nafs is what? A female attribute. So alayha is talking about the nafs. Hmm? Uh -huh. So then God says, And you, Muhammad, السلام, the one who has revealed the Quran, uh, who has received the Quran, and you are not their advocate, neither are you their representative. You are not their advocate, and you are not their representative. You see what God told him. Good. So now, Quran chapter 39, verse 41, we can see clearly why God has brought down the truth. He brought it down for mankind. He revealed the book for mankind so that we can get the truth that he wants us to get. The reason why he created the heavens and the earth, we can get the truth from his book. Right? So then God says, so whoever is guided, then it is for his soul. And whoever goes astray, then he only strays against it. The same soul. You stray against your soul. You are not straying like for me. No. And you are not their advocate. Likewisely, I am not your advocate. The truth is between you and I, God has shown us the truth. It's either you follow it or you leave it. That's up to you. Right? So now I take you to Quran chapter 10 verse 108. And let's see what God says concerning the truth. Where can we find the truth of God? We have seen that God has revealed the book to mankind with the truth. So the book contains the hack. Right? Inside. Now God tells the messenger, 
since you are not their advocate, but you are being an, uh, uh, imposed to tell them the truth, right? That's why he says, "Atiu Allah wa atiu Rasul." Ah, that fa in tawallu, fa inna ma ala Rasulina balagu mubi. The Rasul, he only has the balagu mubi upon him. So yours is just to pay attention to the balag, and that is it. So he has been told, Kul, ya ayyuan nas. Now he's talking to mankind. Remember, Quran chapter 7, verse 158. Muhammad as a messenger told mankind, Kul, ya ayyuan nas, inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an. So he didn't say, inni rasulullahi ilaykum. He used the word, inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an. There is no exception. If you are part of mankind, Muhammad as a messenger was also talking to you. Quran chapter 7, verse 158, right? So now Quran chapter 10 verse 108. Muhammad again as a messenger was telling us. He says, Kul, God asked him to say, right? Ya ayyuan nas, kar ja'akumul haqq min rabbikum. Then he says, faman ittada fa inna ma yatadi li nafsi. Wa man dalla fa inna ma yadillu alayha. Wa ma ana alaykum biwakil. You see, he's, he's repeating exactly what God says in chapter 39, verse 41. You see what God says there. Chapter 39, verse 41. So now Muhammad himself as a messenger was repeating the same thing God asked him to, uh, to tell us. So now he's telling us here. He says what? Oh, humankind, the truth, al-haq, we can see that al-haq is a marifa, it's a definite article. It has the Truth is not only truth, is the truth. So that is a definite truth from God. Right? So he says the truth has come to you from your Lord because you are part of the human beings. You are mankind. You are part of mankind. Unless if you claim you are an animal, no problem. Exclude yourself. But since you are a human being, God is talking to you. Mankind. A nurse. Huh? So then God says, from your Lord, therefore whoever is guided, thence he is only guided for his soul. And whoever is misguided, then he is only misguided against it, that is his soul. And I am not your advocate. This is what the messenger has been what? Imposed to tell us. He is not our advocate. Neither can you say, oh, on the day of judgment, mashallah, Muhammad alayhi salam will be my uh, intercessor. He will intercede for me and he will help me to go to Jannah. He doesn't even know you. How can he intercede for you? Do you see the point? Good. So now, we leave chapter 10, verse 108. We go to chapter 18, verse 29. Now, there's something interesting about chapter 18, verse 29. I'm not going to finish the verse. I'm going to stick at the top side of the verse. It says something interesting. The messenger was asked to say, Kul, Al-Hakum min Rabbikum. Then he says, Faman shaa fal yomin, wa man shaa fal yakfu. The truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, then let him believe. And whoever wills, then let him disbelieve. Nobody is forced. Remember, if God wanted to have forced us, everybody will become a believer. <laughs> it's impossible for you to say you are not going to believe. It's just like I give an example. It's just like, for instance, if you are in a nation, you are in a country, whereby the country, the government is more powerful than you. And then the government says, by force, everybody must take a vaccine. You don't have a choice, can you? They tell you, okay, if you don't take a vaccine, you are not going to be employed. If you don't take a vaccine, you will not be allowed to this restaurant. You don't take a vaccine, we will not allow you to drink from this water. You don't take a vaccine, you are not allowed to go to public toilet. You understand? The tyrants will put you in a position where you have no choice. So if God wanted to do the same by not giving us the free will, this is why I don't agree with people when they say we are slaves of God. Impossible. God never takes slaves. <laughs> the word Abdullah in the context of the Quran doesn't mean slave. A slave, a slave is not given a free will. If God has given you free will, we don't tag you as a slave. You are no more a slave. You become rather a servant. You understand? We are here. That's why it says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَبْدُونَ To serve, that is to worship God, is in the act of serving God. We are never, never, ever the slaves of God. 
You understand? Uh -huh. It's a shallow-minded people who think we are the slaves of... You see somebody say, I'm the slave of Allah. Are you a fool? Do you understand what a slave means? <laughs> now, so God says, the truth is from your Lord. So whoever wills, then let him believe. And whoever wills, then let him disbelieve. Do you think if God wants to take you as a slave, he gives you this choice? You understand? So this is why people are protesting out there. Because the governments are restricting people's rights and freedom. They don't give people the rights to decide for themselves. So that is enslavement. And we call that mental slavery. So don't think when you are born in a developing country or in a country you think you are, you are free. No. God has given you freedom to decide. Right now I can decide to become an atheist. Do you think it will reduce God's position? No. But why is it that when you refuse to take a vaccine, the government is upset? Hello? It's just like you being a slave when you tell your master, no, today I'm not going to the farm to weed. Your master will take you to the back and whip you hundred lashes. Now, that shows you are a slave. So that is what the government are doing to you today, this modern day and age. So if you are in the Western world, don't think you are free. <laughs> You understand? Uh -huh. So that is the world we are today. So you rather say God is being harsh on you, but you forget your government is more unjust. Quran chapter 10 verse 44. God is never unjust to the mankind. It is rather the people who are unjust to ourselves. We are unjust to ourselves. You can see what our governments are doing to us. You said you have taken the vaccine. I said I'm not taking. He said he's not taking. She said she has taken. Why, why the enmity there? Why the antagonism? I should rather hate you for not hating the, uh, for not following the truth. But who cares? I'm not hating you. So why is it that you have to force somebody just because you have taken a vaccine? If you think the vaccine will protect you, why are you upset with other people who are not taking the vaccine? The last time I check, <laughs> Quran, God is saying on the day of judgment. Chapter 80, verse 33 to 37. You will be on your own. Your family will be on their own. As a matter of fact, not a father cannot save a son. Even a, a son cannot uh, save his father. Quran chapter 2, verse 48. You can never ever intercede for anybody. So is it now that we are on the, in this world, you think, oh... No, oh, I've taken a vaccine, but he said he's not taking. He's a threat to my family because he here doesn't have the vaccine. Seriously. Is that how the devil has conquered your mentality? You have become a slave to a system, but here come and conform to the truth of God you are versed. No problem. Let's go on. Now, the word al-haq has been mentioned in the Quran over 100 times. As a matter of fact, over 150 times. As a matter of fact, over 180 times. Yes. Al-Haq. The truth. Now, this is the only thing in this world which causes, which can cause division. The truth. Somebody will say, oh, you have to speak the truth. The truth will set you free. Not always. <laughs> this same truth can destroy things and fix things at the same time. T truth. You understand? The truth. So that is why God himself is the truth. He's not scared. It's just like being a referee in a football match. You understand? You know the detail of a referee? A referee is in between. He doesn't take sides. <laughs> he is just dealing with the truth. If there's a penalty, he has to say penalty. If it's offside, it doesn't matter whether you protest. And say, hey, hey, it's not a penalty. Why are you saying penalty? He doesn't care. His duty is to be a referee. It's not taking sides. So the truth would destroy a lot of things, can fix a lot of things, can cause chaos, can fix chaos. <laughs> that is the truth. Salam, brother Daron. Uh, salam alaikum. <clears throat> uh -huh. So that is how the truth is. So do you understand why most people hate the truth? Not few, most people. Quran chapter 43 verse 78. Most of you hate the truth. I give you another example. It's just like I'm ugly. Let's say, let's assume I'm ugly. Okay, maybe I'm ugly. I don't know. Let's assume I'm ugly. Right? 
And then you just see me and it's like, oh, brother Schweib, you are very, very ugly. Excuse me, do you want me to be happy by that statement? I will be very, very offended. Do you know why I'll be offended? Because I hate the fact that you are reminding me the truth, that I'm ugly. <laughs> do you see how it feels like? Okay, so let's take the uh, example of a, a beautiful lady. She's beautiful, and you keep telling her she's beautiful. She'll get upset. She's tired of hearing that. But if you tell her you are ugly, she'll start laughing. I'm serious. If you tell a beautiful lady you look ugly, she'll be laughing at you. Do you know why? She knows she's beautiful. She doesn't need you to tell her she's beautiful. Neither. So you telling her she's ugly, she will laugh at you because she knows that's the opposite of the truth. You see how it goes? Good. So the reality of this world is the truth can fix things and destroy things at the same time. So it depends how the truth is what? Delivered at sometimes. It depends how you deliver the truth. Somebody will say, hey, why is, I, 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 I agree with this, what this guy is saying. He's saying the truth, but sometimes he's harsh. I know, sometimes I need to be harsh and sometimes I need to be gentle. Do you see how it goes? It depends on the mood and the euphoria surrounding the truth. So that is why Quran chapter 20 verse 43 to 44 uh, Moses, Musa alayhi salam, was told to speak to Pharaoh in a gentle speech. You understand? Pharaoh, because he's a tyrant. So you're going to a tyrant to speak to him in a loud voice? Excuse me, you will not last for two minutes. Do you get my point? But why is it that when our kids, our kids, our children, or somebody we are superior than makes a mistake and we have to tell them the truth, why do we use harsh tone? Or sometimes, why do we get upset to tell them? Because we know we are superior. But when you go to somebody who is superior than you to speak the truth, the best way is to use a gentle speech, a moderate tone, in order to address your point across. May it be, it may give them a chance to reflect and then agree to what you say. You see how it goes. Hey, salam, my brother Anthony. Long time. Hey, brother, brother Paul Nasir. Long time, my brother. Long time. I was thinking of getting in touch with you. Long time, bro. Uh, yes, Anthony Amua. Islam, brother. Long time, bro. Uh, sister is saying, yes. Okay. Who is this? The prophet said, Curse is the one who puts his trust in men and make his flesh strength. They have forgot their Lord. This is a majority of the world who have believed in the lying Satan's who seek only to destroy humanity with his evil poisons. Yes, true. I agree with you, brother Dar uh, Daron Halim. Yes, what you said is actually on point. That's the truth you just spoke. You understand? People hate it when you're trying to wake them up. You know how it feels like when I'm feeling, when I'm sleeping and I'm enjoying my sleep, and then in the middle of my sleep, you come and wake me up. You say, hey, 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 I need water to drink. Can you give me water? I'll, I'll be upset because I'm, I like the sleeping and you're still waking me up. So when people are asleep, they hate the notion that you have to wake them up consciously. They don't like it. So this is why people will hate you when you try to speak the truth or tell them the truth about certain things. Yeah. Uh, yes, I see the same thing. They are separating families. Even children can take the injection behind the back of their parents. Not everybody sees the truth. al -haq. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, my sister, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Or uh, is it brother? You have... Uh, uh, oh my God. How do I pronounce your name? <laughs> is it in a Greek language or what? You know, I don't know. Anyways, I can't pronounce the name. So I'm just reading your comments. What you said is the truth. You say yes. Ah, oh, it's Natalie again. Yes. Okay, no problem. Sister Nat, I see you. Thank you. <laughs> your, your name confused me. I don't know how to pronounce it, whether to start from left or right. Anyways, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, uh... We go to Quran chapter 61, verse 9. Yeah. 
Quran chapter 61 verse 9 and God is going to send his messenger and let's see what he has to send the messenger with. So God says, Huwa allazi arasala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haqq li yuzirahu ala dini kullihi wa law kariha al mushrikun. He is the one who has sent his messenger with the guidance. We all know what the guidance is. That is the Quran. Quran chapter 45 verse 11. Haza huda Quran chapter 2 verse 2 Zalika uh uh Zalika al kitab la rayba fihi hudan lil muttaqin as a guidance for, as guidance for the pious so the Quran is to serve as a guidance for mankind right eh kulleko fa nan salim o vikini please aha so who allazi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haqq so here for people who have studied uh, fus uh, fusha or let's say nahu, the grammatical aspect, we have something we call mudaf, or we can say idafa, or we can say mudaf ilai. Now it says din il haq. Now you can translate it as the the religion of truth, or you can say religion of the truth, right? Because the al haq, uh, the haq has the marifa, has the adat al tarif, right? So when you say Deen al haq the religion of truth is correct. If you say religion of the truth is still correct, right? So the main emphasis mm, of guidance to God is the truth. That is all what we need. So even if somebody has a statement to give you and the truth is missing out of it, everything about it is useless. Same goes with the issue of vaccine. Same goes with the issue of uh, politics. Same goes with every other issue in this universe. Same goes with love. If you tell a lady I love you and there is no truth inside, it is useless. If you say you have faith and the faith doesn't have its own works that you do, it's useless. Just like the Bible says, James chapter 2 verse 20 or chapter 2 verse 26, faith without works is dead, it's useless. So anything existing in this world, no matter how it is, no matter how adorned it is, and the truth is, mit is missing, we are in danger. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to say something. It's a, it's, a, it's a slight tease and a joke. Don't take it personal. You know, sometimes, I think women who are beautiful, who, think, who know they are beautiful, I'm exhorting you, don't, don't wear too much makeup. Just, just, you know, something a little polish is nice. You understand? I would rather exhort women who are actually ugly to wear a lot of makeups on the face. But guess what? When a woman is very ugly and wears a lot of makeup, what happens after she goes to the shower? Do you think somebody can look at her again? So who is she trying to deceive? What is actually behind that makeup she's wearing? There is something we call the truth. So this truth she's hiding can actually please somebody or can turn somebody off. Do you see how it works? The metaphor I'm giving you. So don't hide the truth always. Be real. <laughs> Be real who you are. <laughs> and this is why people who, who see me online, you see the way I am online? It is the same way I am in real life. I'm serious. The, the way you are seeing me now and the way I talk, is the same way I talk in real life. I don't act like a phony to pretend in a separate way. For people who know me, who are based in Europe here, they know me, they know how I am. Do you understand? Be realistic. Be real with yourself. When people don't appreciate the, you for the way you are, who cares? After all, you are living your life for God. Do you, why do you care about what people think? Why will you belittle yourself for what people think? When all that matters is the truth. So somebody say, Brother Shaib, you are a criminal. Ask yourself, are you a criminal? No, I'm not. So why should I be offended? Because they call me a criminal. Huh? <laughs> you see, so this is what life is about. The truth matters. Don't, don't bother whether people hate it. Speak it. Say it. People hate it. So what? So what? Good. So Quran chapter 61 verse 9. He is the one who has sent his messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth. That is what matters. Religion of truth. And when I say religion, I'm not talking about man-made religions. I'm not talking about being in an institution. 
institutionalized religions. No. I'm talking about believing in a supernatural being who controls human destiny. That is what we call the religion because you owe something to him. Right? It's just like when you are employed in a company and you are serving your boss. You are working under your boss. You owe your boss something. That is why you are serving him. Because you have pledged Allah allegiance. You signed a contract to serve him. So you have to do as he has commanded you. To, in order to earn your salary. Same goes with God. Right? So you are not his slave. You are his servant. This is why when you are working for a company. You have your break time. You have your off hours. Where you can go home and be with your family. You are not a slave. A slave doesn't have a choice. So stop fooling yourself and using the word slave of God. Who made you slave? So what did he hack? Then he says, Liyuzi Hirahu. That is to manifest it. Huh? To, to bring it over. To bring something over. Huh? Huh? Yuzi Hirahu. To bring it over. Huh? Then he says, Allah Dini. Allah Dini Kulihi. Remember, there is only one religion. God never, ever, since he created the world, he never gave us two religions, three religions, four religions. It doesn't exist. Quran chapter 42, verse 13 to 14, tells you clearly, the same religion he gave to Noah is the same religion he gave to Muhammad, is the same religion he gave to Abraham, is the same religion he gave to uh, uh, Musa, and the same religion he gave to Isa and all the prophets. No division. Then he said we should establish the deen and we should not be separated therein. So there is no different religion. But it's just that the concept of the religions, that he, the religion he has given us has been twisted into becoming religions. So God says in Quran chapter 6 verse 159, إِنَّ اللَّذِي فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُ وَكَانُوا شِيَاءً لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ إِنَّمَا أَمْرُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Right? So indeed, those who have differentiated their religions and become sects, you, Muhammad, are not with them in anything. And likewise, you and I, we are not part of mushriks. Sunni, Shia, Tijaniya, Ahmadiyya, Salafiya, whatever, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are not part of them. I'm serious. Good. So then God says, Wala mushrikun, Even if the mushriks dislike it, because there is only one religion. God never gave you Sunni, Ali Sunnah. He never gave you Shia. He never gave you Tariqa to Tijaniya. You are a mushrik if you don't stop it. He never gave you Christianity. As a matter of fact, as the Christians, was Jesus a Christian? He never gave you that. Hmm? He never gave you that. Moses was never a Jew. He never gave you Judaism. Who gave you that religion? Who gave you to become Pentecost? To become Roman Catholic. What, what do you mean by Roman Catholic? Who gave you that? Who gave you the audacity to become what you call Octodos? What is that? What is that? You call yourself names? Are you the one going to inform God about your religion? Chapter 49 verse 16. God is asking you clearly. Hmm? Atu allimoon Allah bidinukum. Wallahu ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa ma fi la'art. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. You... You, the unjust human being and ignorant human being, you are the one who is going to teach your uh, God your religion. You, <laughs> after God telling you, in the in the line Islam, Quran chapter 3, verse 19, so you are now going to teach God your religion. Or is it just the truth you hate? So God is the one who has sent his messenger with the religion of truth and the guidance and the religion of truth. Because the, religion, the truth needs guidance. If you're dealing with the truth, you need guidance. You can't be dealing with truth without guidance. Right? Good. So now we move on. Then I take you to Quran chapter 10 verse 35. Let's see how getting to the truth, how you need guidance to get to the truth. So Quran... <clears throat> Surah to Yunus, then we go to verse 35. Right? So that verse 35 will tell us how God can guide us. Exactly, Rebecca and Rena. He didn't give the guest Muhammad, uh, Muhammadism. <laughs> like we have Muhammadans. Hmm? He never gave us that. 
So now God says, Kul hal min shuraka ikum man yadi ila al-haq. Then he says, Kul illah yadi lil haq. Afa man yadi ila al-haq. Then he says, Ahakku an yutaba'a amman la yahiddi illa an yuhda. Fama lakum kaifatakumu. Say, the messenger is asked to tell us, the one who has been set with the, the guidance and the religion of truth, listing what God asked him to tell us. Are there any of your idols, that is your partners, your associates, meaning your idols, shuraka, because that, those are the ones you can use to make shirk with God, right? Are there any of your idols who guides to the truth? Do you have anyone who can guide you to the truth apart from God? Do you have any? Say, God guides to the truth. So you see, God himself is the truth and he guides you to the truth. So it's one who guides to the truth. Listen carefully. Look at these two comparisons. So it's one who guides to the truth. Worthier, worthier to be followed or one who cannot guide unless he is guided. So how do you judge? How do you judge? I would rather follow the one who is not guided but he can guide. Do you see the two comparisons here? So whenever somebody puts Muhammad next to God and tells you you have to follow Quran and Sunnah, tell that person you are crazy. Because Muhammad didn't guide himself, he needed guidance from God. So I would rather follow God because God, nobody guides him, he is the one who guides. So Quran chapter 2 verse 272 clearly tells Muhammad, لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَادِ مَنْ يَشَعَ Their guidance, guidance is not upon you, but God guides whomever he wills. So when we make such comparison, people think we hate Muhammad. Are you a fool? We are only comparing the best entity with someone who is inferior. So of course, we put Muhammad outside and deal with God. Can you compare anybody with God? No. So when it comes to God, put your idols aside. We are not talking about Jesus. We are not talking about Muhammad. Put them aside. They are the creations of God. You will be a fool to put them equal to God or next to God. And claim that, oh, you cannot deal with the Quran without the Sunnah. Are you a fool? God gave you that rubbish? Huh? Or you refuse to reason? Good. So now we have seen Quran chapter 10 verse 35, clearly what God is telling us. So some people will say, oh, so that means somebody cannot guide me. No, the person can guide you only when he has been guided by God. So that is why Quran chapter 61 verse 9 says, Huwa lazi arasala rasulahu bilhuda wa dinil haq. You see, God has to send somebody to guide you. When that person is guiding you, we don't say the person is the one guiding you. We say God is guiding you. It's just like when Joe Biden should send a military officer, or just like Donald Trump sent his forces to go and kill the uh, is it Iranian defense something. Uh, was it defense minister or something head of uh, you know military? When he sends that for that guy to be killed, we don't say the military officers killed the guy. We will say Donald Trump killed him because they killed him on the command of what? Donald Trump. So when God says he has sent a messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth, we don't claim the guidance it is for Muhammad. Only fools will claim in, uh, in, in the Hazdaq al-Hadith Kitab Allah. Wa, uh, wa, uh, wa ahsan al hadi hadi Muhammad. Muhammad has guidance. Muhammad, he has guidance. So why didn't he guide himself? Quran chapter 34 verse 50. Kul in the ala wa ya rabbi. He told you clearly in chapter 34 verse 50. He says, if I should err or if I err, I will only err against myself. But if I'm guided, then it is by what my Lord has inspired to me. And you claim, wa asan al-hadi hadi Muhammad. Hey! Really? The best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad? So Muhammad has his own guidance? So you are putting him equal with God to the extent of saying the best form of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad? Ha! Hey! Who is teaching these people by mistake? Or do they don't understand Arabic at all? Because in the last time I checked, they keep bragging, they know the Fusa, they know the Nahu, they know the Lugawiya, linguistics, whatever, whatever. But look at the gibberish they are speaking always. In Azakal Hadith Kitab Allah. Wa Khair wa Ahsan al Hadi Hadi Muhammad. Huh? What? Who born them by mistake? Quran chapter 7, verse 
wa mimman khalaqna then he says ummatun yaduna bil haqq wa bihi yaadilun and of those we have created or we created that is god saying among the people human beings and then god says what ummatun yaduna bil haqq there are a, there is a group of people or there are groups of people who guide with the truth or who guide to the truth now this verse is not a contradictive verse to chapter 10 verse 35 listen carefully Quran chapter 10 verse 35 is making the comparison of putting somebody in a position of God hal min shurakaikum because God says do not do shirk wa abudu llahi wa la tushriku bihi shay'an ah ومن كان يرجو لقاء ربي فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادته ربي احدا so shirka is forbidden by god so if you have any idol in the extent of the position of god or to uh, associate with god that is when god has forbidden that but when you have an entity for instance muhammad alayhi salam sent as a messenger to guide people using the quran using the book of god yes it is allowed For instance God to send Shaib Abdullah to say God guide the lead the people to the guidance to the truth it is allowed it is nothing bad but it is only when somebody will take my own opinions my own understanding of views and equate it to the knowledge of God that is where the problem starts because that you become association idol worship because instead of focusing on God, the guidance of God you are focusing on what trying to be saying from his own opinion and equating it with the words of God so this is what the sectarians do they put the quran aside then they will bring the garbage they have and compare it with the words of God then they tell you the hadith and the quran are hand in hand are you are you okay are you okay good so god says wa mimma khalaqna ummatun yaduna bil haqq wa bihi yaadilun so among those who have created is a nation guiding to the truth or with the truth and by it they do justice right so by the truth ah huh, they do justice do you see how it works good so now it means you can take guidance from other people but when the guidance is in line with god tells you It doesn't have to be somebody's opinion or views or understand no put it aside only what god says then you take so that is why quran chapter 36 verse 21 it says follow those who are guided and they do not ask you for what any reward follow those who are guided who guided them god just like muhammad wasn't guided by himself who guided him god so if he's guided yes he can guide you to god the same god If he is not guided he can't guide you. Do you see how it works? Good. So Quran chapter 10 verse 82. God clearly tells us how he confirms he affirms the truth with his words. So he says, "Wa yuhiqqu Allahu al-haqq bi kalimatihi wa law karaha al-mujrimun." And God will enforce the truth the al-haqq with his word bi kalimatihi wa law karaha al-mujrimun. God will enforce the truth with his words even if the criminals dislike it. And where can we find the truth of God? Kitabullah. The Quran. Right? Good. Now, since we know God will affirm will enforce the truth with his words. Yeah, thank you brother uh Jasim Al-Katan. Yes. Uh yeah salam uh, brother Shawag Mahmoud you are welcome So Quran chapter 47 verse 2 talks about Muhammad and this part I'm going to read is very very interesting and I'm going to explain to you why it is impossible to go and believe that God sent something else to Muhammad apart from the Quran So Quran chapter 47 verse 2 Wallazina wallazina amanu wa amil wa amilu salihat wa amanu bima nuzila ala muhammad muhammad then he says wa huwa al haqq min rabbihim kaffara anhum sayyi'atihim wa asla balahum what is the verse saying as for those who believe and do good deeds and believe in what was revealed to muhammad alayhi salam which is the truth it is the truth He didn't say huma 
He didn't say huma. He said huwa. Huwa al hakku. He didn't say huma. If he say huma, there's two things. He said huwa al hakku. One thing was revealed to Muhammad. So somebody will say, why was why does he say al kitab wal hikmah? Because al hikmah can be found in the al kitab, just like a zikra can be found in the al kitab, just like al huda can be found in the al kitab, just like al furqan can be found in the al kitab. How difficult is this? Is it difficult? No. So God says, as for those who believe. And do good deeds and believe in what was revealed to Muhammad. Uh, the word Nuzila is a feel by uh, what? Madi. It is a past tense. What was revealed to him? Because now he has it. And well, now we believe in it. Right? So what was revealed to Muhammad? Which is the truth? Who al haq Min rabbihim. Uh, from their Lord. He will atone their bad deeds for them and improve their what? Attention or situation. That is Balahum. Right? Now, we can see it is only in a singular form. The Damir here, the pronoun mentioned here is a masculine pronoun denoting what? The book or the Quran. Because the book has masculine pronoun and the Quran has a masculine pronoun. So this verse is talking about what? The book or the Quran. One thing, not two things. Right? So what has been, what was revealed to Muhammad is the truth. So not the two things revealed to Muhammad. Just like the mushriks will tell you, uh, the prophet says, uh, I've been given the Quran and something like it. What? What? He has been given twins, something like it, twins. Subhanallah. When we go to Quran chapter 6 verse 19, if you go in that chapter, Yeah, Shuaq Mahmud, the Quran only confirms the Torah and the Gospel. It's a confirmation. It confirms what is there. For example, chapter 5, verse 44, right? It confirms something there. So, Quran confirms the Torah and the Gospel. If you go to Quran, chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 3 to verse 4, the answer is there. Quran, chapter 3, verse 3 to verse 4, you get the answer there. So, it's a confirmation of what was before it, right? Thank you very much, uh, Brother Salis. Yeah, so let's go on. So Quran chapter 6 verse 19, Muhammad alayhi salam himself, this is what he says. وَأُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ هَذَا لَقُرْآنُ لِأُنزِرَكُمْ بِهِ لِأُنزِرَكُمْ بِهِ وَمَنْ بَلَكَ And that this Quran has been inspired to me, this is what Muhammad said. This Quran has been inspired to me in order to warn you by it and whomever it may reach. Right? Whomever it may reach. Good. Shuag Mamu, chapter 3, verse 48, is talking about Isa, alayhi salam. It is talking about Jesus. He has been taught the Al-Kitab, the Hikmah, the Torah, and the Injil. And all of them are found in one kitab. Quran, chapter 19, verse 30. You go and check it. When Musa, uh, when Isa, alayhi salam, he told uh, the, his family, Kale inni Abdullahi atani al kitaba Then he says, Waja'alani nabiya. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. He says, Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of God. Then he says, Atani al Kitaba, he has given me the book, Al Kitab. He didn't say Kutub. You understand? Al Kitab. Then he says, Waja Alani Nabiya. Then he has made it and made me a prophet. So a prophet brings Al Kitab. Just like in Quran chapter 6, verse 82, you read up to verse 89. All the prophets were given Al Kitab uh, and the Hukma. Just like Quran chapter 2 verse 213, Kenan nasu ummatan wahida. Uh, then God wabatha lau nabiyina. Uh, then he sends the prophet to become mubashirina wa munzirina. And then he sent down the al-kitab with them. So the prophets, they have al-kitab with them. Not kutub, not books. He gives them one. Salim Wemi. Nazwa. So we go to Quran chapter 17 verse 73. Let me check my time. Okay, one hour. Quran chapter 17 verse 73. 
we can see that before 1773, Quran chapter 6 verse 19, the prophet and the messenger himself says, Wa uhiya ilayya haza la Quran ilu unzara kumbihi waman balag. So it was the Quran which was what? Inspired to him in order to warn us by it. He wasn't told to warn, mm -hmm. warn you by Sunnah or Sahih Bukhari or any garbage out there. He was only inspired to warn you by what? Quran. Li unzara kumbihi waman balag. Right? Quran chapter 7 verse 2, he was only inspired to warn you by the what? Al-Kitab, the, the same book, the Quran, nothing else. Nothing else. Quran chapter 17 verse 73, the mushriks will tell you that the prophet was given another inspiration. Huh? They say, Wahi bigayr al-matlu, the wahi which has not been recited. They will tell you that, that he was given some wahi. As a matter of fact, personal wahi can be given to anybody. Quran chapter 42 verse 51. Quran chapter 42 verse 51. Quran chapter 27. Let me confirm. Quran chapter 27. And you go to, uh, let's see, if, I'm, if I remember that verse right, I think the mother of Musa, alayhi salam, Quran chapter 27 verse... I'm trying to remember. Is it Quran chapter 28 verse 7? Yes. Quran chapter 28 verse 7. Surah al -Qasas, The mother of Musa alayhi salam. She was not a prophetess. She is not a prophet. But God gave her inspiration. In order to cast Musa alayhi salam in the river. Does that mean she's a prophet? Or does that mean that inspiration has to do with us? No. As far as inspiration is concerned, why he God can give to anybody? Chapter 42, verse 51. God said it clearly. Chapter 42, verse 51. وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَنْ يُكَلِّمَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا وَحْيًا Do you see? أَوْ مِنْ وَرَائِ الْحِجَابِ أَوْ يُرُسِلَ رَسُولًا for you here be is nihi maya shah. Then he says, Innahu aliyun hakim. It is not for a man that God should speak to him. Ah, huh? God should speak to him except by what? Inspiration. Yes, Rebecca and Rena. He even inspired the bees in chapter 16, verse uh, 60, I think from 67, 68, 69. Yes, he inspired the bees himself. So inspiration, as far as inspiration is concerned, a person can receive inspiration which has nothing to do with human beings or which has nothing to do with mankind. You can receive personal inspiration from God. And it's never impossible. God is saying that in chapter 42 verse 51. So if Muhammad has his personal inspiration, that is different. But as far as the Quran is concerned, this inspiration is single-handed alone. We don't, we don't associate the inspiration of the Quran with something else. And come and lie to us that he has been given different inspiration. To do what? To hide it from the people and to give it to the, uh, the, the, the hypocrites. Uh, that hypocrites who write the garbages and they, they say uh, sunnah or guidance of God for you. Now let's go on. So now we can see in Quran... Uh, Chapter 17, verse 73, where I wanted to show you this. Quran chapter 17, verse 73, it says what? وَإِن كَادُوا لَيَفْتِنُونَكَ عَنِ الَّذِي هَوَهَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ لِتَفْتَرِيَ عَلَيْنَا غَيْرَهُ وَإِذَا اللَّا تَخَزُوكَ خَلِيلَ Now this verse is very interesting. <clears throat> and they almost will have tempted you away from what we have inspired to you in order to invent or fabricate about us other than it. So God used the word gairahu. It is references to the Quran or the book, which is a masculine pronoun. When God mentions al-kitab, he used the domir, a masculine pronoun. When God used al-Quran, he used the domir as a masculine pronoun. So God used the word gairahu. He didn't give him two inspirations for, for mankind. 
He gave him one inspiration which has to do with the Quran. So this is why Quran chapter 16 verse 19, he says, That and that this Quran has been inspired to me in order to warn you by it and whomever it may reach. So that is the inspiration he was given. Nothing else outside the Quran to be given to us. Good. So we continue. So Quran chapter 47 verse 3 clearly tells us that uh, after Quran chapter 47 verse 2 when I recited he says uh, uh, the truth that was revealed to Muhammad that is the truth from your Lord from their Lord right then verse 3 says that is because those who disbelieve follow falsehood and that those who believe follow the truth from their Lord does God uh, does does God cite to the people their examples so people who actually disbelieve, they follow falsehood. People who believe, they will follow the truth. And I'm going to show you the examples in the Quran as time goes on before I end. So I take you to Quran chapter 34, verse 6. Let's see the evidence here. We go to Surah to Saba, then we go to verse 6 and see who are those who follow the truth according to what God is saying. So God says, Yes. Exactly. Uh, exactly, Rebecca. Now, so chapter 34, verse 6, it says, وَيَرَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا لِإِلْمَ لَذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ Then he says, هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَيَادِي إِلَى سِرَاتٍ عَزِيزٍ حَمِيدٍ And those who have been given the knowledge. What is the knowledge? The knowledge of the book. The knowledge of the Quran. And those who have been given the knowledge will see that what has been revealed to you, Muhammad, Ilaika, from your Lord, is the truth. So what was revealed to Muhammad is the truth. Yeah, exactly, Brother Shahid. Even personal inf uh, inspiration we can, we can get. It doesn't contradict the word of God, yes. We can receive. Till date, people can receive personal in inspiration from God. It doesn't mean God has detached from us or he doesn't have communication with us. So it's only the fools who think, oh, it is only Prophet Muhammad who can have inspiration. That's how foolish they are. Right? Now, <clears throat> so and those who have been given the knowledge will see that what has been revealed to you, Muhammad, from your Lord is the truth. And it guides, listen, and it guides, God didn't say they guide. Says, God says, وَيَرَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا هُوَ الْحَقَّ لَذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَيَادِي Then God used the word هُوَ 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 الْحَقَّ It is one thing. The domain here is a masculine pronoun for one thing. Not two, not three, not four. Right? So anybody who keeps repeating and say, Oh, two things were received, uh, sent to the Prophet. You ask them, what is it? They'll say, الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكَمَ They think the hikmah is something different. The hikmah is found in the book. It's not outside the book. So Quran chapter 17 verse 72 downwards to the verse, 7, uh, verse 39. Sorry. Quran chapter 17 verse 22 downwards to verse 39. It clearly tells you the hikmah there. Zalika mimma awha ilayka rabbuka minal hikmah. Minal hikmah. You see, aha, uh -huh. so the hikmah on its entirety is even in the book. It's not outside the book. So that's why God always used the huwa only to attribute to what he has revealed to Muhammad. You understand? So then, and those who have been given the knowledge will see that what has been revealed to you, Muhammad, from your Lord, is the truth. And it guides to the path of the Almighty, the praiseworthy. Thank you very much. That was it. Now go to Quran. Aha, let's continue. Let me see here. Okay. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. So the next evidence can be found in chapter 22, verse 54 to verse 55. My time is near, so let me just skip up fast a bit. Uh, just to give the, ans uh, the clear answers then I bring. <laughs> yeah, brother Shahid. <laughs> yeah, no problem. God is in control. Let whoever wants to do what they want. God is in control, right? 
So Quran chapter 22 verse 54 to verse 55. So that those who have been given the knowledge will know that it's annahu. So God used the masculine pronoun to address the book. That is the Quran. Nothing else. Annahu al haqqu you, you see how God addressed the truth. Annahu al haqqu min rabbika. Then he says, so that he says, that it is the truth from your Lord, you Muhammad, your Lord, and they will believe in it. Bihi, singular. It's not denoting that sun bihima. It's not saying bihima. No. God never gave him two separate things as the mushriks are claiming. He gave him one book. That is the Quran. Quran chapter 7 verse 2. It claims, it testifies that. Right? So then God says, and their hearts will humble to it. Lahu, masculine pronoun. Again, Damir, one. Then he says, for indeed, God is the guide of those who have believed to a straight path. So God will guide those who have believed to the straight path. Right? We don't need any other person's guidance. So verse 55. But those who disbelieve will not cease being in doubt of it. Minhu. The Quran. Those who disbelieve, they will never cease. They will not cease being in doubt of the Quran. Always in doubt. You tell them the Quran is enough. They say, ah, hey, no, you know the sunnah. The Quran is sufficient. Ah, hey, no, how do you do your salat if you don't follow the Quran alone? The Quran explains everything. Tell me how can I use my television? Where does it say how to use my television? The Quran is sufficient for the guidance. No, Ahi. Okay, tell me if I want to sleep with my wife, what do I need to do? <laughs> That's the kind of questions that the secretaries will keep asking you. <laughs> oh my God. So, but those who disbelieve will not cease being in doubt of it until the hour comes to them surprisingly or the punishment uh, of a fruitless day comes to them. That is when you see who is lying and who is telling the truth. Now let's move on. So Quran chapter 10 verse 36. The reason why this, all these things happen is because most of them, God says in chapter 10 verse 36, listen what God says. وَمَا يَتَّبِعُوا أَكْثَرَهُمْ إِلَّا زُنَّا إِنَّا زُنَّا لَا يُغْنِي مِنَ الْحَقِّ شَيْئًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا يَفْعَلُونَ And most of them follow not except what? Assumption. Indeed, the assumption does not avail against the al haq That is the against the truth. Assumption. How can you use assumption, hearsays, opinions, conjecture to argue against somebody who is holding the truth? So that's why God says in Quran chapter 25 verse 33, illa tafsira. They will not come to you with a, an instance, a case, an argument, an example. We have brought you the truth and the best in explanation or tafsir, commentary here. So let them bring any arguments they have. I'm waiting. Now we go again. So we have seen the answer clearly what God is saying concerning having the truth with you. So Quran chapter 2 verse 42. What God is exhorting us to be cautious of. He said, And do not conceal or do not cover, do not mix. When we say talbis, it's like libas. You see your shirt, you wear it, you cover your body. So you are using something to cover something. So wala talbisu, meaning don't use battle to cover the truth you know the truth but you are using battle just like they use sunnah and sahih bukhari to cover the quran so what the quran says the scholars will not tell you what the hadith says is what they tell you so wala talibis al haqq bil batil wa taktumul haqq wa antum ta'lamun in order to conceal the truth while you know do not do that the word taktumu comes from the word katama meaning to conceal to hide something so do not conceal the truth while you know. Don't do that. God is warning you. Now, we continue. When we go to Quran chapter 10, uh, sorry, the reason why God is warning us because the, the people of the book, al Kitab, they did the same thing. Quran chapter 3 verse 71. Ya al Kitab, lima talibisun al haqqa bilibatil wa taktumun al haqqa wa antum ta'lamun. The people of the book did the same thing. So that is why God is also warning us in Quran chapter 2 verse 42. He is asking the people of the book, oh people of the book, why do you cover the truth huh, with falsehood? Why do you cover the truth with falsehood? Ya yuwal kitab, 
لما تلبسون الحق بالباطل وتكتمون الحق وانتم تعلمون and you conceal the truth while you know why do you do that and now you have the uh, the mushriks who claim they are muslims and they are doing the same thing concealing the truth with falsehood so we go again quran chapter 10 verse 32 now god is going to ask us a question but asking a, a question he is going to tell us what he actually means fazalikumu allahu rabbukum alhaq and that is god allah your lord the truth he is the truth right if we need the truth who do we go to the truth allah so he says fama za ba'd alhaq illa dalal what is there after the truth if not error Hey, salam, brother Maroon. Uh, brother Maroon, you're welcome. Huh? What is there after the truth, if not error? Then he says, for Anna to Sarafun, and then why are you diverting? Why are you deviating? Why? Huh? How are you deviating? Why? How are you going sideways? When you know after the truth, there's nothing else except error. You still want the error. Sahih Bukhari. Keep going. No problem. So I take it Quran chapter 17 verse 81. It says clearly, Wa kul ja al haq wa zahaq al batil inna batil kana zahuka. And say the truth uh, has come. Wa zahaq al batil and falsehood will what? Vanish. Inna batil kana zahuka. Indeed the falsehood is bound to vanish or will uh, will eventually what? Vanish. Zahuka disappear. It's an evidence. Right? When there's lies for so long and you bring the truth, because you have the evidence, you wipe out the falsehood. It can never repeat itself. It's evident. And this is why when people tell the truth, people try to kill them, to, to silence them, so that the truth cannot be heard. Because when it's heard, the falsehood can be wiped out. Right? So Quran chapter 30 verse 60, uh, Quran chapter 3 verse 60 to 62 is going to give us the solution how to handle liars in the public when they are arguing with you how to make it easy and simple that they cannot argue with you let me show you the answer is in quran chapter 3 verse 60 to verse 62 god says allah hakum min rabbik fala takun fala takun min al muntarin then he says faman hajaka fihi min ba'di ma jaaka min al ilm fa qul ta'alaw nad'u abna'ana wa abna'akum wa nisa'ana wa nisa'akum wa anfusana wa anfusakum then he says thumma nabtahil fanaj ala la'anata allahi ala al-kazibin do you see what god says then god says inna haza la huwa al-qasasul haqq then he says wa ma min ilaha ilahi illa allah then he says wa inna allah la huwa al-azizul hakim so what does the verse say the verse clearly says the truth the truth is from your Lord, so do not be among the doubters. Who are the doubters? The mushriks. Then it continues. Therefore, whoever argues with you, Muhammad, concerning it, fihi, concerning one truth, the truth, after what has come to you, Muhammad, of the knowledge, then say, come, let us call our children and your children, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves, and let us supplicate and place the curse of God upon the liars. And see even if any Sahih Bukhari scholar will do that with you. They will never do it. Indeed, this is the narration of what? Truth. Of the truth. This is the narration of the truth. You see what God says? This is the narration of the Al-Haq. That is why God created the heavens and the earth. And there is no God except Allah, the God. For indeed, God is the Almighty the wise. You see how simple it is. So to bring this topic to an end, I take you to Quran chapter 43 verse 78. The verse that creates a lot of enemies. لَكَدْ جِيْنَاكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَكُمْ لِلْحَقِّ الْكَارِهُونَ We have brought you the truth. But most of you hate the truth. You see what God says? We have brought you the truth, but most of you, the people, human beings, hate the truth. So don't be surprised if you see majority being Sunnah, Shia, Tariqa, Tujaniya, Ahmadiyya, Salafiya, Christians, Jews, whatever, allow them to be. Just be a Muslim according to the truth. That is enough. 
Don't, be, don't bother whether you are in the minority. We are not here for like to play a political game or to seek for a uh, po population. It's about the truth. In the day of judgment, you go and face your God. You will be, your soul will be sufficient as a corner over you. Why bother what somebody else is doing? Hmm? Be, uh, be, be focused on what God asked you to do. That is enough. That is the truth. That is why you are here. Conform with the truth, what God says. That is enough. Simple. Thank you very much. Ramatu Lahada. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Brother Saeed Adam. Welcome. Uh -huh. So you see, you conform with the truth. If God says black, stick with black. If he didn't say blue, please don't open your big mouth and say blue. He never said blue. What is your issue? You see what the scholars are doing to you? Tomorrow, today they tell you music is haram. Tomorrow they tell you it's halal. <laughs> today they tell you picture is haram. Tomorrow they tell you it's halal. Ask yourself, is the deen for them? Quran chapter 22 verse 78. God is simply telling you, who are Ajitabakum? Wamaja alaikum fiddi min haraj. He is the one who has chosen you and has not placed any difficulty in the deen for you. He has not placed any difficulty. So ask yourself, if your religion is difficult, is it from God? Is it the one God has chosen for you? Millata abikum Ibrahima. Is it Islam, the one God gave to Abraham, Musa, Isa, Noah? Muhammad alayhi salam, is that it? Ask yourself. You think what he's doing, you are doing is the truth? What if I told you it's not, it's not the truth? What if what you are seeing is not what it is because you never looked further? Have you ever contemplated to investigate what you are being told? Have you ever cautioned your teacher? Okay, your teacher is teaching you. You trust him, right? What if he makes a mistake? Who will correct him? Do you study for yourself? If you don't study, what makes you think you are secured? So Quran chapter 33 verse 67. You will come on the day of judgment if you don't conform with the truth. Kalu rabbana inna atana sadatana wa kubara ana fadalluna sabila. Our Lord, we have obeyed our masters and our leaders and they misled us from the way. You see how simple it is. Because you keep saying samina wa atana, samina wa atana, samina wa atana. You keep praising your scholars. And don't study. And you go six feet down below and face God. And you let them light you. The angel will say, Marabuka. Then you say, Allah. Madinika, al Islam. Ma kitabaka, Quran. Why don't you say kitab wa sunnah? You see the dirty slaps the angel will give you. Go and stand in front of the angel and say kitab wa sunnah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I bring the topic to an end. My kids are calling. Subhana Rabbi Zati Amma Isifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursalim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Peace be upon you all. Thank you all. And don't forget to get your copies. I still have some limited stock and hopefully we keep it all right. I have the link up and then you find it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it for the support. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you all.